Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Shay Dixon. And Shay, it is Friday, September 20th, and LSU plays a day game tomorrow against UCLA, 2.45. So be a hot one. Not, not 11 a.m., but still not a night game here as UCLA comes to town. How are you doing? Um, just where, what are your thoughts so far as, as we are a day away from, from the matchup? I think everybody moved past South Carolina. The South Carolina fans have not, but no, LSU have fans not. have seemed to to move beyond it, take the dub, get out. Um, I think which is going to shock everyone, we should probably lead this podcast by saying that UCLA is not the UCLA team that they faced uh, a couple of years ago in Los Angeles. That was a game that they lost when LSU had Max Johnson at quarterback and uh, UCLA put up a ton of points on them. Uh, this one for as bad as uh, every LSU fan. Um, and I feel like most of them are rather morbid half the time or 90% of the time and, yeah. and uh, are down on the team. They're 24 point favorites against UCLA. This is how Vegas views the difference between these two teams might be. Yeah. Um, we'll get to UCLA. That I- means for the people who don't bet that is, 24 points LSU should win by. That is a massive spread for Based, a game like LSU versus UCLA. Yeah, you could look at it this way if you don't if you don't gamble. Um, UCLA starts the game up 24 to zero, basically. Well, <laughs> that's South Carolina started 17 zero. Yes, they started 17 zero on the actual field. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll get to that. I do think um, we should start with the injury report. Um, just to kind of get that over with before we get to Brief the, rest us. of the game. What, what did Brian Kelly say? Brian Kelly yesterday uh, gave a very brief injury report. I think um, it is notable who he did not include, which includes Deshaun Womack. So we expect him to be available. Jordan but Allen. He did not play against South Carolina, nor Correct. did Jordan Allen. Correct. So he did not include them in his injury report. Obviously, you know, we'll see the official one that comes out tomorrow. But those two were not listed by him, so I we expect them to play. Then he listed three players. Chris Hilton, probable. Jalen Lee, defensive tackle, um, out. And linebacker West Week, questionable. So obviously the big one there is Chris Hilton, probable. But probable, but he then went on to preface it and you know try to um, calm everybody down by saying, I hope nobody's expecting him to go out there and you know, catch a hundred yards and catch five passes and so on and so forth. It's very much a get his feet wet type of situation here. So that way he's a full go by the Ole Miss game. He said that um, in his press conference and he said that in, in his radio show. So, you know, temper your expectations, but we're well, going to get fine. to see Chris Hilton get on the field this week. Uh, okay. Let's break this down in a couple parts. Jordan Allen was your starting safety for two games. Um, did not play against South Carolina. Uh, at all, was injured, and now is not on the injury report. During that South Carolina game, Matty B, Sage Ryan uh, played free safety, but really uh, we saw a lot of the free safety uh, snaps going to uh, a young guy uh, in Deshaun Spears. Or Let's see. Oh, no, I'm bringing up two games ago. Let's see uh, South Carolina. Who got the majority? Sage took 24 at strong safety. Jarden, 25 at free safety. Uh, major moving out of that star role back to strong safety. They were playing that four, three defense with all three linebackers on the field. So no more star position. Then he got the bulk of it. 56 snaps at strong safety ahead of Sage. Uh, and then major was that Sean like Spears got 44 snaps to so the bulk of them, the majority at free safety. Um, where does Allen fit back into this group? Uh, when you look at, kind of going into this week, he was playing strong safety uh, to start the season. So that would be where Sage and uh, and Major Burns were playing this past weekend. Yeah. I expect Major to continue on the field a lot. I, I think they, they trust him for one reason or the other. I mean, Brian Kelly called him consistent for them yesterday at his press conference. You know, personally, I don't think he's been consistently good for them. But they, they trust there him. There have been bright spots. Sure, there have been bright spots for everybody on the defense, yeah, and that's that's what they've been. Um, Sage, you know, made a couple plays here and there. Um, you know, I, I don't need to keep harping on this. I don't think the safety position has an answer. That's why they've been platooning 
players in and out. That's why they've been trying Deshaun Spears. If there was an answer, you know, they have two safeties and they play them the whole time. I think it's like, you know, people say if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one quarter, one quarterback. Well, if you have five safeties, you don't have two safeties that are any good. Like that's just kind of the situation they're in. So um, it will help. I think Jordan Allen, I said on the last podcast, if it was up to me, I think Jordan Allen um, would be one of their two starting safeties kind of no matter what. And then you figure out the rest from there. Um, so it's good to have him back um, for consistency stake and try to figure out who your best options are. Well, that's, I mean, and someone asked about this in the mailbag and we said it this way that people wanted them to rotate guys. So they're doing it. They play they young. Yep. They played the non-starters more than they played the starters in that South Carolina game, uh, or at least who had been the starters and, and then moving guys like Deshaun Spears, a, a true freshman into the mix. So we'll see. It could be a Spears Jordan Allen backfield uh, or yeah. defensive backfield back there. We'll see. But I would expect them all to play versus UCLA. I think all of them, that's yeah. fine by me. I, I want to see all of them get the rep so we can, if I'm a coaching staff, iron things out between UCLA, South Alabama, who's putting up points right now by a week. Then you get Ole Miss, who obviously is going to be one of the best offenses you'll face all season. So uh, a lot of DB play with to talk about in the coming weeks with Womack. Former five star. We saw him last year in spurts. He said, Hey, look, I've got to get ready, fine tune my game. I'll be good as a sophomore. We saw him against USC. He only played four snaps against Nichols. So I'm guessing that the injury was then, like mm-hmm. he was coming off the bench playing four snaps. He must have gotten banged up. Misses last week. Now he's not on the injury report. So we don't have a huge sample size. Remind me, what was his impact in the Southern Cal game? Did he play very well? He's a backup to Swinson. Uh, I don't have his stats up in front of me. I think he made a couple plays, uh, a couple pressures, but um, it was definitely a lot of safety. This could be his coming out game uh, of sorts? Yeah, I I think so. I think this is a big game for the defensive line in general, which we'll we'll get into, especially, you know, going against an offense that I just don't think has an identity. So, yeah, I could very well see Swinson, Womack, you know, Shan, so on and so forth, making plays. Yeah. And the other was Chris Hilton, who was going to be a starting receiver for this team entering the season. Yes. Do you want to see him out there? Or like people, I think, say, oh, we need him most for like Ole Miss SEC play. Yeah. Does he re does he get re injured in these next two weeks? I don't know. That's a risk you've got to take. I guess you're at the point where he has to get live game reps, right? Yeah, at some point he has to get on the field and play. You can't just roll him out against Ole Miss and and hope that he's ready. Um, At this point, he's missed now three straight games. I think at some point, like Brian Kelly said, you kind of got to just get his feet wet here because although he played most of the year last year, like, again, he was relatively healthy last year. He played all but two games. And with that being the case – this is a different role for him. This is a different spot. He started throughout all of fall camp. And so not only for him, for his sake, but also for the offense's sake, because he's a very different receiver than a Xavier Thomas or an Aaron Anderson or, you know, a a Kyle Parker. So they, they need to figure out what the offense looks like with him involved as well. So that's part of the reason I think they need Hilton on the field here. All right. Um, where does Hilton stand? We can talk more about that later, but do you still feel, think Hilton's a top three receiver on this team? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think he is. Um, obviously, the biggest problem for him has been staying on the field. Um, I think, the, you know, we'll still need to see how his hands are, you know, how all the technical stuff is that has been a question for him throughout his career. So he's definitely not, you know, I, I don't think they're adding – you know, an NFL receiver per se, but he is a guy but, who I've said before is is important to their offense. Remember, before the injury in camp, Joe Sloan had said he had become a total receiver. He was not this only a deep threat, that his route running yeah. was precise. He had added a lot of elements to his game. His hands looked good. So I think he's a guy that will sneakily make some very big plays for LSU this year. And I'm not just talking a deep bomb, as we, everybody wants Chris Hilton back for. Um, yeah. I think he's a guy that could be relied upon much like a Kyron Lacey and an Aaron Anderson at this point. Yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful because they need, they need a little bit more speed and a little bit more just 
playmaking on on the perimeter, in my opinion, um, to kind of get these defenses pushed back a little bit more. So, uh, by and large, though, everyone is looks good for this one. They'll have en- they'll have enough guys suited up. Yeah, it's uh, not a it's not a bad injury report by any means, especially with Allen and Womack back, Hilton probable. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's not a not a bad injury report. Now you know the Guillory and Emory injuries always suck because those are behind you at this point. Those obviously, are, but those, those are, are season you. ending. Yeah. So, um, let's let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. Okay. Um, let's start. What did with- you learn, uh, Mister Film Study? Tell us about these Bruins who. I think the only thing people knew about the Bruins were that they had a new head coach and he knew that they were in LA. And that was <laughs> the extent of it. That was his opening presser with the media, uh, where he just said, "What was it?" He was kind of just like, "I'm glad yeah. to be hired by UCLA. We're yeah, here in Los like, Angeles." Yeah, we're here in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, we're, we're, yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah. Kept going all right, the big questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ready for questions. Um, no, th- UCLA. It's hard approaching this game because, like, on one hand, they're a Big Ten team. You know, they have some athletes. You know, they they were good last year, obviously, under a different coach, different coordinators, all that stuff. Um, good in a vacuum, at least defensively, especially. But this year, so far, they've beaten Hawaii sixteen to thirteen in a game that where they were down for a lot of it. It was tied for a lot of it. They end up winning on the last second field goal. Then they come home. They lose to Indiana um, in. California 32 or 42 to 13 in a really uninspired effort. And so through two games, you have very, very little to hold on to. It's, it's really um, kind of like where LSU was, I guess, through two weeks, except much worse because Indiana did just beat the snot out of them. Really 42. Uh, like I said, to give up 42 points to an Indiana team that also has a new, a first year head coach, coming in who also has a lot of changes a new quarterback and whatnot indiana looked like the better coach team on both sides of the ball and i think when starting with with um kind of what this team is we can start with ucla's offense against lsu's defense and ethan garber's that quarterback played for them last year started over dante moore a five-star guy and kind of dante ends up going to oregon so garber's had the full-time starting role but He's just been really, really bad this year. Um, throwing the ball, um, he he's, doesn't have the vision. He's tucked the ball a lot. He's taken sacks. Um, he looks to run a good amount, even though he's not the, the, the fastest guy. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for LSU to, to make some plays um, on the defensive line. So that's kind of where I start with it. But overall, it's an offense that, you know, the starting running back, T.J. Harden, averages 2.7 yards per carry. Uh, Ethan Garber's 54% mm, completion. Then I'm looking at the stats with you, Matty B. These, I'm wondering if Deshaun Foster, who is the head coach, if he's got – could he suit up potentially? They uh, they need a, they need somebody because they can't run the ball He was a all. hell of an NFL running back uh, for seven, eight years and yeah. certainly one of the most decorated in, in UCLA's history, but – uh, yeah, Foster, the head coach, who God, he had probably been on that staff for a decade almost. Yeah, uh, gets promoted to head coach. They're sort of in a turnover period right here after the Chip Kelly era came and went. So you're getting UCLA at a low time, but as you just noted, offensively, when you've got a quarterback, you've played a couple games now. He's thrown one touchdown. He's thrown three picks. He doesn't have any true rushing ability that he's shown so far. Uh, that's kind of made any headway let's see he's, he's tried 14 no, he's, carries he's, for 68 yards so that's seven yards in attempt okay yeah, or about 4.8 yards in attempt i'm sorry that's not terrible but he's frustrating to watch to me like he's just not a um he tries to m- extend plays in ways and tries to get downfield which i understand in this offense you got to kind of get your yards however you can um so for lsu sake obviously another quarterback that looks to run um in, in the last two weeks, you know, they've they've been a little bit more dangerous. I think Nichols and South Carolina have obviously used their quarterback runs in different ways than UCLA will, but this is still – you still have to account for Garber's legs here in a way. Um, you know, one of their touchdowns this year was him running for 20 yards and getting down to the one-yard line uh, and then punching it in. So you still have to account for his legs. Oh, um, you said that so easily. Get to the one and punch it in. Score. Yeah, that's what. They As do. if it just comes naturally, Matty B. <laughs> the only way, I think that was their only touchdown against Indiana. Actually, now that I now that I mentioned it, so yeah, tw- they have twenty nine points in two games. 
Hawaii. I mean, and just Indiana. look at these stats. Uh, they've yeah, run the ball a hundred. They've run the ball forty six times this year for one hundred and sixty seven yards and a touchdown. That includes the run you were just talking about by the quarterback. Then they punch it in with T.J. Harden for their touchdown. Yeah. Uh, and then they have thrown the ball. God, that it's so bad. Uh, nobody on the team is really – Rico Flores has over 100 yards, and he has their only only receiving touchdown yeah. on the year. And Garber is a 50% passer, 400 yards, one touchdown, three picks in two games. Who did they play week one? Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii, two games. Hawaii and Indiana where you should be putting up much better numbers than that. When you talk rebuild, boy, are they at the very bottom ground stage of this, which probably takes us back to – 15 minutes ago when I said LSU's 24 point favorites and everybody was like, wait, what LSU is, was winning by two points, but at Nichols <laughs> after halftime, like really? Nah, this is a game that LSU should comfortably win. Yeah. And I, I understand the concerns. Like I understand using the Nichols game as a parallel to this to be like, Oh, there's no way they cover it. Um, I will say Nichols at the very least had an identity on offense Nichols I think was much better coached at this point no you know Deshaun Foster first year coach it's hard in your first year when you're taking over a team that lacks talent Um, oh yeah I just don't think UCLA has an identity on offense I don't think they have personnel on offense and it's kind of just a run out there and try to figure it out it's hard to have it's kind of like an LSU defense and stretches here Matty B it's hard to have an identity when you don't have the pieces and I'm not saying right this second for LSU but they've been there in that spot in recent years yeah so uh, we're kind of where UCLA is is running or passing they don't look very good your film study could not have lasted very long there on their offense well yeah no it was it was troublesome I mean the Hawaii game is really the, the scary part because you should not be getting held down the way that they got held down to Hawaii I mean 16 total points, three of them came at the last second, and there were a lot of chances for Hawaii to actually retake the lead and take some control, and they kept throwing interceptions. So I I don't think this game worries me a lot, but LSU's defense still, you know, can't allow a 60-yard touchdown run in this game. LSU cannot allow Garbers to scramble for 70 yards in this game. Like, there's still things – and that there's some receiver talent from UCLA. I don't act like they don't have capable guys. J. Michael Sturdivant was played with Garrett Nussmeyer, you know, I, I believe Flower Mount Marcus, um, or at least was in the DFW area. So it's like they have some players here. So if LSU's not sharp, then sure, this could very well, you know, allow UCLA to score 21 points or something like that. And I'm gonna go back to that number because I said South Carolina shouldn't break 20 points. Well, UCLA is a significantly worse offense than South Carolina is. So I, I just want to throw that out there for people who are worried about the LSU defense. Y- yes, there is a still a concern for me. We need to see them put up four straight quarters of consistent football. But UCLA, man, what are they doing? I don't know. I, I will be concerned if UCLA breaks 20 points again. The over-under um... – again, in Vegas terms here, but UCLA is expected by the books line they're putting out um, for what would be about even money is around 17 points. LSU's yeah. is right at about 40 um, yeah. to score more than 40. So you're looking at a game that should be in that range. Matty B, you said last week you'd be furious if South Carolina's defense could score more than 20. Um, Offense, they did yeah. just that. Uh, two big busted runs. Yeah. I hate that game because Les Miles played it for years and we had to sit through it. But I do agree in a way with Kelly that's like, you don't want to play the, if this would have happened, but look, they, South Carolina had two monster runs of 70 and 80 yeah. yards for touchdowns. LSU went down to the one yard. They went in the red zone twice and didn't get any points. That yeah. game could have looked a lot different if you can eliminate a couple of mistakes and punch the ball in. So maybe this is the week to do that. Uh, don't let, UCLA put up you just heard the numbers 17 points is what Vegas said they should hold them to under that with the offense they've had this year this has been a very bad offense yeah again Indiana holds them to 13 and honestly very very few chances for UCLA to ever score the ball on in that game um and Hawaii holds them to 16 so yes again if okay let again if you can take away the big plays which UCLA does not have a Lenora Sellers they don't have a Raheem Sanders and Against they have Sean Foster. That's <laughs> yeah, they have Deshaun Foster. Like this, 
and I think Nichols was a more disciplined offense, more not I don't want to say more efficient offense, but this was they had an identity I think more so than UCLA does. So, um, I, I will again I will be very concerned if UCLA allows over 20 points and I don't care how it comes if it comes on three big plays and they don't allow a yard for the rest of the game like th- this it has to stop at some point we're getting very very close to Ole Miss coming in here and they are not gonna they're not gonna care if their plays come off you know one place touchdowns or anything like that they so you LSU has to figure it up they have to get more discipline and honestly they need to figure out who their best players are at this point so that was kind of concerning for me on Tuesday on Monday when Brian Kelly was like oh you know we're still figuring out who our best players are it's like okay, let's let's go. This is UCLA week four non conference game. You're favored by a four t- four scores almost. Like this this should be a game where you figure it out and you should have an uh, you should have a good idea. So uh, good good chance for us to get a look at the defense against a team that should not be putting up many points or yards on you. So do we see them clamp down, get some pressures, yeah. all that, uh, be able to keep Garbers uh, their quarterback in check when he tries to run the football? Uh, we will see. But if you flip it. Your film study, I thought it would get better. And again, on the Bengal Tiger, Matty B's got film study every week. He did a great one earlier in the week on LSU's run game, but then took a look at UCLA offense defense. It's got video gifts in there, so you kind of it's very easy to follow along. And I got through with the offense. I was like, man, that was bad. Then I get to the defense, and it opens up with Indiana's quarterback, whom I've never heard of, wins uh, Curtis Rourke, uh, Big Ten Offense Player of the Week. Uh, 25 of 33 for more than 300. He threw four tutties, no picks. And as you wrote, it was quite alarming that UCLA could not make him uncomfortable at all. At all. At all. No, no sacks. Indiana's I mean, no picks. Awesome. Them. There was UCLA tried blitzing some and their corners couldn't hold up. They Curtis work. I will say he's, he, He's a good player. Like from Ohio, he transferred in from Ohio, where he had some success. And I, I think so. I, I know he's good, but obviously, we the standard at LSU is different with with Garrett Nussmeyer and so forth. Um, and so watching Curtis Rourke tear them apart defensively, I just I was like, Garrett Nussmeyer can do exactly what he just did. Like it was eight yards. Uh, the average depth of target was eight yards. Um, it was nothing really crazy. I think the longest completion was thirty three yards. So we're not talking about him bombing down the field. And I'm like, this is exactly what we've seen through three weeks of Garrett Nussmeyer in this offense of being efficient, um, taking what they give you, beating you know the receivers, getting separation and making plays. Um, I mean, if UCLA is going to give you that, I think Garrett Nussmeyer could have a very, very similar stat line to what Rourke just put up. This was something we talked about on the film study to open the season when we were talking about Southern Cal's strength of their defense being the defensive backs. Uh it burned if I'm a UCLA fan when I had to read your line in the film breakdown that said uh, LSU should be able to mismatch their linebackers. The linebackers aren't that good uh, in coverage, and their best defensive backs all play for Southern Cal. Uh, they had a mass exodus of guys, and they all went to play uh, with their coach who went from UCLA to USC, which we yeah. talked about to open the season. So not only are they shorthanded kind of across the board, but they had some pretty good DBs, and they got taken with them to Southern Cal. Yeah, uh, Kamari Ramsey's not walking through that door for them at safety this year. Um, they they don't have I, – I do think, like, the defensive line made a couple plays against Indiana. I thought were fine. You know, the, their linebackers um, I don't think are capable in the pass coverage aspect, but they, they shot the run a couple times. Um, I, I just think LSU should have no problem throwing the ball all over them. Now, the question for me becomes – can LSU run the ball against them? Can they take what they found against South Carolina, you know, whether it's with Durham or whoever else, can they find some success running the ball? That's going to be a little bit more of a question for me because Indiana only averaged like four and a half yards per carry, which is decent. Not they great. didn't need to. They were throwing it all over the But field. they didn't need to. So, you know, is LSU just going to approach it the same way? We're just going to pass the ball for 350 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Like the game's over at that point. If you can effectively just dice them up through the air like, Curtis Short just did. You did like some, you did say, Hey, I like some of the stuff I've seen from their defensive line and even in their li- linebacker with some blitzes. Yeah, so they made the a couple line plays. should get some, you know, a little bit of a test, which will be yeah. good. A continued test for the O line is a good thing as they work out their run blocking uh, woes, I think. Yeah. Again, this is this game is a lot more about LSU than it is UCLA. It's a very, like, I don't know if UCLA 
I know Vanderbilt just lost, but like where they would stack up in a Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, UCLA discussion, like how those three, but I think they're in a similar realm in terms of like that's the level that I think LSU is going to play against here. Like they're going to play against a team that does not have SEC athletes, does not have at this point, again, year one for Sean Foster, SEC like an identity, like SEC coaching. So like they have a lot to work on. So this is about LSU being a fish on offense, blocking, creating a run game against a bad defense. Like, can you do the things you need to do to be effective in a game where you're favored by four to four scores, basically? So that that's how I'm going into this game. I don't think UCLA has nearly enough um, to give LSU problems here. So that's where I'm like, if you LSU struggles here offensively or something like that, or gets off to a bad start like they did against South Carolina, where they had three straight punts, you know, then it's concerning for me. But I'm going to go into this game hoping that LSU gets off to a good start and flexes their muscle a little bit at home against a team that obviously should not um, pose them a ton of threats. Still a little ad read. Y'all know what it is. Game time. It's game time. Uh, whether it is football or anything, concerts, uh, NFL, the Saints are red hot. You're trying to yes, check out are. the Cowboys after they're trying to bounce back from a defeating, gut punching loss to Derek Carr and the Saints. You can still get your tickets. Uh, we rock with Game Time. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the promo code there, but download the Game Time app. And when you check out, put in on three, O N three. Easy as that, on three. Get you 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Whether it's super deals, getting it right before you the game's kicking off. They always have the lowest price guarantee. They've got event cancellation protection, everything down to job loss protection. So even if you're buying tickets far out, you're good to go. You're covered. Uh, I always talk about like in the panoramic seat view because you get a real feel for where you're actually sitting. I actually scooped up some Saints tickets uh, for later this year and uh, was hooked off of the view. I said, okay, the view's good enough for me. Uh, but if you're what oh Taylor, you can even go to Taylor Swift with Gracie Abrams if you feel like spending a good amount of money. Maddie B is going <laughs> on YouTube now. Um, people are willing to give up their tickets to Taylor Swift if even floor seats I saw there. Oh um, yeah, if you've got a chunk of change, but thousands of dollars minus the twenty dollars you'll get off the purchase, you've saved some money there. Um, you see Eagle Saints. Uh, what do we got for UCLA LSU, Matty B? I'm sure there's still plenty of tickets. Like I yeah. said, I check it on game day a lot. Um, game time on game day is my go-to move. Uh, there you see it. Uh, you can be oh, lower yeah, bolus, lower bolus. Yeah, 50 bucks $60, for the lower bolus. 64 right here. Look at that. Mm -mm. For 60 bucks, you can be close to midfield, five, 10 rows up. Yep. yep, these are all uh, – and I bet that these come down. Now, uh, I will say – As well. I think a lot of people, for a lot, for everybody looking at tickets here, this side is more expensive because I think this is the shade side. Well, I don't think. I know. Yes. So, you can either cook on that side for half <laughs> off or you yeah. can pay 100 bucks and sit in the shade. Or you can find a little spot over here, you know, $60. That's like how $70 you play it on the shade side right here. Half the game you'll be in the sun, half the game you won't. Yeah, seven dollars on shade side. So yeah, there's some, there's some deals, and you get twenty bucks off. Uh, we love Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets uh, with Game Time. Download the app, Game Time. One word, you'll see it pop up in the App Store. Create your account. Use the code on three for twenty bucks off your purchase. Terms apply. Again, get on there, create an account, redeem the code at the end with O N three. That'll get you twenty bucks off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time, Maddie B. Game time. Yes, sir. And with that being said, a 2.30, 2.45 kick is when they're at. Spoiler alert, it's not at 2.30. It's really at 2.45. That's how honest we'll keep it with you guys. They're going to talk about things in the broadcast and let you watch them run out. And Yeah. Uh, 2.45, they'll kick it off. You want to do some uh, before score predictions, some breakout players, some MVP yeah. predictions? <clears throat> yeah. Um, None of us had Caden Durham last week. Nope. We did not get Caden Durham right. Did I have Swinson um, last week? I may have. Uh, maybe I had Harold Perkins. I think you had Perkins because of the sellers aspect. Um, I don't remember who I took last year. Now that I think I had Savion. I had Savion. 
Well, um, let me just say, never forget when we ranked our top 40 players on the team before the season, I had Swinson at number four. Laughed at for putting a non-starter. Whoops. Whoops. SEC I, Defensive Player of the Week. Co-Defensive okay. Player of the Week. Tell him. Tell him, Shay. I just All did. Right. Braden Swinson, if you're out there, <laughs> your boy had you ranked in the top five. Yes, sir. Swinson jersey coming soon. Number four. NIL deal. <laughs> Get NIL on the Bengal Tiger. Uh, okay, you want to do defense first against a bad UCLA offense? Yeah. Um, this is a team. This is a guy, uh, Garbers, who I think's taken four sacks and he's been under pressure a lot this year. Um, I'm not going to take Swinson from you. Uh, we need a running list so we don't pick them all the same. I, yeah, we do we need a running list. Nuss every week if we wanted to. Um, yeah. It's like a survivor pool almost where you can't pick the same player. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh we we'll go back and retroactively do that. We'll yeah, see you got to get creative. The first couple of weeks. Yeah, be like from save here Nuss for like – Okay, so pick, pick somebody you know you haven't picked. You, you can um, at least pick someone you know you okay. haven't picked yet. Give me, give me, uh, give me Parrish Shand. Okay. Because I think his ability at defense, like he played, what was it? It was like 25 at D tackle and 20 on the edge or something like that last game, somewhere around that number. So he's on the field a ton. Like he's on the field for like 70% of snaps or 60% of snaps. Um, and he plays both roles. So I think there is a good chance he puts up some numbers and against Garbers who maybe will tuck and try to run it up the middle or something. Shand will, will make some plays. Give me Shand. Um, with at least one TFL in this game. All right, I'll go. You know, someone who played a lot and did not play very well at all, I thought, versus South Carolina was Savion Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, he played more than 50 snaps and just he missed some tackles. His pass rush was okay, but not great. They drop him into coverage a couple of times a game, I know, but really he splits it between the run and pass. He can he can play both for you, balanced. I think he has a big game. Give him. I, I might have chosen him week one then, though. Maybe. Maybe. We'll, go, we'll, we'll, go. we'll avoid it this week. We'll, he we'll had week, week one. Um, yeah. Nichols, I don't count. He did not have a great South Carolina game. I think Savion Jones in a bounce-back spot here has a good game, especially considered – He's playing that end spot, and his main backup has been Shand, who's now playing a bit more inside, as you said, splitting duties. Yeah, That may keep him on the field a little bit more until we see whomever else it might be. I don't. They've played Gabe Rutherford some back there, but I, I don't Gabe think they... 13 snaps were technically at right, out, right outside linebacker, which would be that stand-up edge, so mm -hmm. Kevin Peoples yeah. uh, can move them around. But And kudos to Kevin Peoples, man. Talk about him an assistant that we have not talked about a ton, but on the recruiting trail, he's got two top 100 commits and uh, we talked about it in the mailbag. What he's done with these ends has been really nice to see. And we still haven't gotten a chance to see a fully healthy Womack for a full game. So uh, beyond yeah. USC. So that'll be a good one this weekend. Ooh, maybe I choose Womack. I almost did Ooh. that. Go ahead. Change your pick over there. This should be a defensive line game. This should be a yeah, game. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Savion Jones, but I think okay. Womack could. I don't know how much Womack's going to play, but yeah. yeah, yeah, coming off injury, we'll see. Okay, um, I like where we're at. We're both with defensive line, uh, yeah, think, offense. Mine's going to. Y'all aren't ready for mine. I'm telling you. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I, you're not. I'm going to go. You want me to go <laughs> first then? Yeah, give me, give me a, just give me a CJ Daniels game. Oh, okay. I mean, he's, okay. he's going to get on the board here. Touchdown he had, for DJ Daniels. He had a thousand plus thousand plus yards and receiving and 10 touchdowns at Liberty a year ago, uh, playing for Chadwell, that great offense. And uh, they finished right behind LSU in total offense. So we knew Matty B that he could help this team. And we kind of finally saw it last week, right? Against South Carolina. That was his yeah. first game where it was like, all right, they're going to him. Yeah. He almost made a catch on the sideline to get two toes down. That was an insane looking grab, yeah. uh, but had a solid game. Yeah. So give me, give me CJ. I think he gets touchdown. All right. You ready? I'm trying to think who it's going to, who it could be. I, you know, maybe like Aaron Anderson, I probably should. Oh, no, that's just, he's had big games. Okay. Yeah. Caleb Jackson. Caleb. I like it. 
So we saw Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson get the bulk of the carries through the first couple of weeks. And Josh Williams is Josh Williams. He'll get you his yards. He gets some touchdowns. He passed blocks well. Caleb Jackson's vision has let him down. I think he's at times looked for contact when he didn't need to. He could bounce it. And that's what Brian Kelly said. He said, look, Caden Durham had the luxury of sitting on the sideline against South Carolina and watching the first few series play out and us screaming, guys, patience, bounce it when you see it take it to the outside. He did it. I, I would love to see Caden Durham continue to run away with great games and then establish something. I can't, I'm not counting Caleb Jackson out yet. I saw him have games last year that had a spark to him. I think that now that he's got a few weeks of film study, they're going to give him a shot. And I think that's what we saw from Brian Kelly this week, right? Like I, I thought people might overreact when he was asked, is Caden Durham going to be the number one back or at least going to get a lot of run. And he said, Hey, look, everybody's getting run. We're rotating because this shows that, hey, look, Caden can do it. Everybody else, y'all need to step up and show that you can do it. Yeah. To me, that was directly at Caleb Jackson. So I think Caleb Jackson has a big game this weekend. I like that. I like that. Give, give me Caleb Jackson as the uh, leading rusher. I like it. All right. Um, my last question, or I guess before we get to two predictions, if LSU pulls away here, are we, is it still Ricky Collins? Second, the quarterback that's going to go in first, do you think? I'd have to think so. Yeah, I mean, we saw that's what happened previously. Yeah. What was that, Nichols? Nichols. Um, but I don't know. Like AJ Swan is something up with him to where he can't play, or are they just rocking Collins? I don't know. But yes, I thought they're just rocking if, Collins. If they get up, I think it's Collins. But then again, we've seen when they get up, if that's late in the third or whatever it might be, that they're not getting, they're not throwing it all over the field with the backup. They're going to get in there and run the football. So. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would say that Collins would be the, the backup. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we're in that spot going into the second half. It's a twenty. You want to have your game post-game reactions written by the end of the third quarter. Please, is your goal here, please, please. That South Carolina game, trying to write the reactions because I really try to have them as soon as you know the final buzzer goes or something. South Carolina, I was, it's been I was like, the it's, last two seasons. It's been impossible. I was like, I, I I started writing, and then it's like, well, nope, they go down and score. It's like, oh, there's a 75 yard run. So can't say the defense has been, you know, great. But anyways, predictions. Um, I haven't even written mine or thought about mine yet. Um, do you do you have an idea for yours? Or are we both. Going um, to- yeah, I'm gonna go 45 to 14, LSU. I do not think that UCLA eclipses 20 points. I think the over-under right around 17 is fair. Yeah. I don't think they'll go field goal chasing because I think they know they have to score points. I think that they'll they'll get in the end zone once. If they don't, kudos LSU. Um, maybe they can catch another late touchdown. But I think they'll go for it a lot, which will result in turnovers on downs. So I'll keep it to even numbers there with the touchdowns, no field goals. So Yeah. 45, one field goal for LSU, 45-14. Hmm. I'm going to – I've I've been bit so many times, but I'm going to believe in this defense, kind of like I did last week, um, to, to not let a bad offense move the ball on them, not to allow a big, a long touchdown. <clears throat> Give me 38-10 to 10 LSU. Oh, you always go low. All right. Yeah, that was low. The last two weeks I've been very, very low. I think the nickel game I might have been low too. No. Would it and I guess we'd have to see how it played out. Are they long drives? Are they bust? It's all the same. I just how how worrisome would a 45 to 28 win be? <sighs> when to this point UCLA has shown no capacity to score the football. 28 points. Man, I don't care. Again, I don't care how it comes. I, I know some people were, were saying, you know, it's um you had the blocked punt as well last week, which which factors in, but they did just score like on one play from the ten yard line, like it was really easy, and uh, the run fits have been so bad. I, I will be very concerned if it's twenty eight points for UCLA. I don't care what LSU does on offense. If it's sixty three twenty eight, I'm still concerned um, because there's just there's been no signs of life here. Hawaii did not give them anything. Indiana gave them nothing, and. This should not be a game where you allow twenty eight points. I would Nichols would points. Nichols beat UCLA? That's a, I don't think so. But like I can see how Nichols gives teams more problems than UCLA does. Again, there's something to be said about 
having an identity and UCLA at this point. And they're a bunch of Louisiana animals. You got to yeah, factor that in. You got kids from Curtis out there running for 160 on you. So exactly. Exactly. So um Nichols, yeah, uh, that 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 was a different. I just don't think UCLA should in any way be breaking off 60 yard runs or you know, there shouldn't be busted coverages. There shouldn't be these terrible run fits. They're just not a lot of concern I have with UCLA's offense. So I'm going to go lower scoring. I think LSU, you know, UCLA's defense, like I said, hasn't allowed, didn't allow like a huge play to Indiana. They just got diced up repeatedly. So I could see it going that way. All right. That's it. That is the pod. There's the pod. Um, okay. So, um, Quick recap, UCLA is not that great at football. They're in a rebuild. LSU is in a rebuild, but in a much different spot, a much better overall team with overall better players right now. I think the better question is, you know, when we get to next week, UCLA or U, U, University of South Alabama's offense actually has been putting up points, and albeit against bad teams like North Texas and Appalachian State. But that'll be a much more interesting game because that South Alabama team has an identity on offense, and I just watched them last night. is actually pretty fun, you know, for a G five team. So that I look forward to next week's game a lot more than this week's game. I, I'll say that much. So they put up eighty seven on Northwestern State in a game where they just decided yes. to just run the clock. Yes. So that uh, they, they can. They, they can also sleep. put up twenty at Ohio. Yes. Don't sleep on Ohio now. There's the Mac Curtis Work from Ohio. Did, did good things there. So, um, so, do you think South Alabama would beat UCLA? That's a good question. I can't is next week's game actually a tougher game than this one? I can't. I think it's a tougher game. I legitimately think it's. I don't know who would win between those two teams, but I think it's a tougher game because South Alabama has an offense that can actually put pressure, you know, on LSU in some different ways. UCLA right now is just such a mess. Like they're just such a mess. I think. I think Brian Kelly and them should. And again, this goes back to get off one of my keys to the game, get off to a fast start. It is the most cliche thing anybody can write in a keys to game story. But I am so tired of watching LSU fall behind an eight ball or go three and out or, you know, or not come up with points against USC when you get down to the one. Like you have to at some point put together a couple drives on both sides of the ball and put this game away, for God's sakes. This should not be a competitive game in the second half at any point. So, please, LSU, just take care of it. All right. Leave us a like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe to the Bengals Tiger on three over there. Check us out. Message board, all that good stuff. Uh, Shay just posted some really good recruiting insight over there for the football fans. Uh, if you want the latest recruiting scoops, I mean, well, football, basketball, any way you want it. It's, it's Ooh, Maddie there. B dropped some big basketball scoop this week, too. So, get over there and check oh, it yeah. out if you oh, have yeah. it on the Bengal Tiger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't need to get into it. It's to check it out if you haven't already. Go check out the message. It's popping. Well, it's popping. Um, so, yeah, thank you all for joining us. We will be back after the game for a post-game reaction show, and we will talk to you all then.